Hello, listeners, and thank you for joining us on the virtual rendition of the first iteration of our Waterloo's Rainbow History Tour, this one being 50 Years of Glow to celebrate the University of Waterloo's Glow Center. But before we dive into the tour content and the histories we will be discussing today, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. The University of Waterloo and this tour are situated on the Haldeman Tract, land that was granted by Frederick Haldeman via the Haldeman Tract Treaty to the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations of the Grand River within the territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. On this tour, we will be discussing some change makers of rainbow history on this campus with respect to the Glow Center, though it would be neglectful of me to ignore that the systems that 2S LGBTQ plus folks have been fighting at the University of Waterloo were put in place by settlers to further oppress Indigenous peoples. It should also be stated that today's binary and limited understanding of gender and sexuality are colonial constructs. So. As we discuss the movements of queer settlers on campus today, I'd like you to keep in mind that this fight did not start here, the stories we will be telling are not monolithic experiences, and that Indigenous peoples have been contending with these facts since colonial contact. So with that, let's dive into some rainbow history. We begin our tour at the South Campus Hall back in 1970. A group of eight friends decided to form an organization to combat the difficulties faced by gay folks living within a predominantly heterosexual society. This followed the Stonewall Riots of 1969, which were led by Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Here, I want to state and emphasize the point that queer and trans people of color play and used to play, continue to play, a very integral and important role in the queer rights movement and are often overlooked and overshadowed by more dominant identities. So I'd like you to keep in mind here with this content today that queer and trans people of color like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera are at the heart of pride. And following their efforts in 1969 and the group of eight friends in 1970. In March of 1971, the Chevron newspaper, which was a student-led newspaper at the University of Waterloo, reported that a movement was beginning and Waterloo University's Gay Liberation Movement, WUGLM, or WUGLM, which encompassed both the University of Waterloo and Laurier, held their first meeting with over a hundred folks in attendance. Jim, do you have any memories or anecdotes from that first meeting. We'd love to hear them. I was completely stunned to see so many people at the first meeting. I had no idea that there were so many local folks who were willing to come to a meeting like this. Over the next few months, I heard many stories about people who'd come out to the relatives, and some of them were good stories, and some of them were perfectly awful, in which they were thrown out of their homes. I developed the emotional strength to come out to my parents as a result of hearing the good stories. Thank you, Jim, for sharing that. That's really incredible. Um, Now, after that first meeting in 1971, Wilglom would go on to organize social dances and support circles on campus or stage gay-ins, wherein students would show up en masse to predominantly straight events and proudly present themselves in same-sex couples. They would also travel to Canada's first LGBTQ rights demonstration on Parliament Hill and was also host to various social events within the GLOW offices. In 1973, the organization completed their Operation Socrates handbook, which answered basic questions about homosexuality through a series of interviews with lesbians and gay men. I'll repeat here that the narratives of these early forms of activism were predominantly white and cis gay and lesbian folks that often overlooked the uh, experiences and struggles of queer and trans people of color, which many folks within the community are trying to emphasize by evolving the acronym to be 2SLGBTQ+, 
uh, to emphasize the experiences of Two-Spirit Indigenous folks and the acronym QTPOC, which stands for Queer and Trans People of Color. And then, in March of 1980, Wiglum voted to change its name to the Gay Liberation of Waterloo, or GLOW. And today, in continuing that message to advance the inclusion and acknowledgement of more diverse experiences within the queer community, this organization is now known today as the GLOW Center, which has its home here um, on campus to this day. And this name change does more to acknowledge the full spectrum of identities within the 2S LGBTQ plus community beyond the L and the G that tends to dominate early activism. As it stands, the GLOW Center is in its 50th year of operation and is quite proudly the oldest 2S LGBTQ plus student-led organization on a Canadian campus. So, well done. That said, the GLOW Center is not the only 2S LGBTQ plus student org on campus. Um, that works to improve the lives and emphasize the experiences of folks within the community as groups like WPIRG, Queers, UW Drake Club, Rainbow Reels, and QTPOC are also doing important work here on campus and across the city of Waterloo to acknowledge and prioritize a vast array of backgrounds, different faculties, um, queer and trans people of color, and the 2S portion of 2S LGBTQ+. So I'll leave links to uh, their socials so you can check them out at the end of the tour. South Campus Hall also housed the UW Broadcasting Club, which produced several radio shows that were hosted by members of the Rainbow Community. CKMS-FM was the first UW campus radio station, and in 1978, Gay News and Views aired as the first known 2S LGBTQ plus radio program. Soon after its launch, though, a 1979 open letter published by Imprint, the UW newspaper, had various straight folks complaining about the broadcast and its content, claiming that the only difference between gay news and views and a bucket of manure was the bucket. So although this broadcast provided a safe space for the rainbow community to publicly speak on their interests and experiences, they did still face the criticisms and discrimination of their straight peers on campus. Another long-lasting radio show hosted here was called the Leaping Lesbians Radio Show, which debuted in 1979, the same year that Gay News and Views was facing criticism in imprint. This show featured upcoming events, music, interviews, and the history of womankind every Thursday evening, though after 20 years on air, the radio show ended in 2000. The Out and About radio show started broadcasting in 1993 and ended in the same year as the Leaping Lesbian show. Jim, did you ever participate in or listen to any of these radio shows? Would you like to share? I was interviewed a few times on Gay News and Views, which was produced uh, by some friends of mine that I'd met around 1975. The interviews probably occurred in the late 70s and the early 1980s. The other show, Out and About Radio, was operated by some people, uh, mainly Dave and Alan, whom I'd met in 1995 at the first Pride celebration that was held in the Kitchener City Hall. I was interviewed on that show a few times. Uh, They broadcast each year from the Pride celebrations until the year 2000. Their show was produced off campus, and they had endless problems with the group that controlled the community radio station. They eventually gave up in the year 2000, and it should be noted that there were no similar problems with the campus radio station. As we make our way from South Campus Hall to the next stop on our tour, I'm going to play a little bit of music from a band I came across while researching this tour as they actually held a concert uh, at one of the future stops on this tour. Charlie Murphy and Jamie Sieber had a band called Rumors of the Big Wave. They operated in the late 70s, early 80s, and only released one album, but it was full of... Uh, queer anthems at the time so I'll let you enjoy 
one of their songs. stop here is the graduate house or the grad house which is a hub for graduate students to socialize in a more relaxed and casual space to celebrate a thesis defense or casually mark papers i myself am quite familiar with the grad house unfortunately i was not able to celebrate my thesis defense here because i defended in april of 2020 over zoom so Hopefully in the future we'll take a rain check and 
I'll get to come back to the graduate house in person to celebrate my defense. But the building itself was originally the Schweitzer farmhouse, and for the rainbow community in question, this building was also a safe space where same-sex couples could comfortably be themselves amongst other UW students. And in the early 2000s, following GLOW discussion groups, participants would often make their way to the grad house for an afterglow social, which is an incredible name. Uh... I love it very much. Jim, did you ever uh, attend the grad house or go to any of these afterglow socials? I do remember going to the grad house after glow meetings in the late 1990s. Um, I recall it being a very comfortable place to be who we were. Now, the walk from the grad house uh, to our next stop is a bit longer, so I'll give you guys another song by Rumors of the Big Wave. They may try to cure you, try to steal your truth away, but I expect any damn fool to know Good love is here to stay, yeah No, it ain't that easy This old world ain't made that way When you're setting free The love that brings a brighter day And if you got gayness Just don't let it die inside you And if you got gayness, bring it out and you will grow No wonder why they fear us, try to chain our love with law If everyone in this land shared love, this rotten system would surely fall So if you're feeling crazy Just like you don't belong Liberate your gayness Brothers and sisters are here To help you along And if you got gayness Just don't let it die inside you And if you got gayness Bring it out and you will grow The struggle ain't for nothing All our work is not in vain There's plenty of joy in the freedom From those worn out domination roles they play Now I know better than anyone else What feels right with me For me there ain't no loving like Sweet gay loving how it sets my spirit free And if you got gayness, just don't let it die inside you. And if you got gayness, bring it out and you will grow. That we can love as equals That's what's really got them scared The bonds are built up on power That they don't know how to share God won't save all of the children From the family plan So we're liberating gayness All across this land And if you got gayness, just don't let it die inside you. And if you got gayness, bring it out and you will grow. Bring it out and you will glow. Now, 
Next up here we have is the Modern Languages building, and this boar here is Porcellino. He's the mascot of the Faculty of Arts, and he's often dressed up by students. Here he is donning very responsibly his mask and obeying uh, social distancing rules, so he's a pretty solid mascot for the Faculty of Arts. Um, various classrooms in this building were used as meeting spots for coffee houses and the like held by the Glow Center, and they were held every other Wednesday with posters noting that it was a great place to meet new friends. Coffee houses were also held on Laurier campus on a monthly basis in the Central Teaching Building. I myself am very familiar with this building. I did my uh, master's thesis project here in classical studies and was very lucky to have a very supportive um, faculty that encouraged my research into the lives and experiences of queer women in ancient Greece and I want to take this moment to acknowledge that my experience as a white cis woman living my queerness at the University of Waterloo is not a monolithic experience. I had a very accepting faculty and was very comfortable being myself among my peers, so I was very lucky in that regard, and uh, that is not the experience of everybody here at the University of Waterloo, which gives uh, the need for more diverse and specific uh, queer orgs here on campus, specifically QT, POC, KW, which uh, targets and supports the experiences explicitly of 2S, LGBTQ+, and queer people of color uh, here at the University of Waterloo, and they do really great work uh, supporting them. And again, their um, links and uh, socials will be provided at the end of this tour so you could check them out give them your support um and with that uh jim have you ever attended any of these coffee houses familiar with the modern languages building at all at various times we also met in the bottom floor lounge in the modern languages building this was also another very safe place to gather and as it happened over the years, we found ourselves moving from one building to another in order to host our discussion groups and coffee houses because one venue would be unavailable at some point or other, usually because of a prior booking by people who worked in the building in question. And the GLOW office was far too small to accommodate these meetings. And as we walk from Modern Languages up to our next stop, I'll throw you guys another song from Rumors of the Big Wave to listen to. When we started, I had nothing to fear All along you wanted somebody else As you made your intentions clear I knew my time was up I heard a ringing that bell You cornered me, I couldn't get away The ship was leaving at midnight I turned around inside myself and said Are you gonna make it through this time? You're gonna give a little tenderness You're gonna find some for yourself You're gonna find the one Were the best that heartache could buy But when you feel a little tenderness You're gonna find some for yourself You're gonna find the one who hides away When you give a little tenderness You looked me in the eye You laid it on the line I can't believe, I can't believe I never saw you coming Said and done, 
little tenderness You're gonna find some for yourself You're gonna find the one who hides away When you give a little tenderness You're gonna find some for yourself You're gonna find the one who hides away Just give a little tenderness All right, here we have uh, Hagee Hall, this monster of a building. Uh, some of you might be familiar with for its humanities theater. Uh, it was named for the first president of the University of Waterloo, Gerald Hagee, and is home to the history department here at the university. And it was also host to various uh, music events, dances, and anniversary celebrations held by the Glow Center throughout its history. In 1980, a lounge on the third floor of this building was the location of a Halloween dance hosted by GLOW on November 11th, 1989. Another Halloween dance was held with posters declaring, too late for Halloween, and not quite Christmas. Guess it's time for a GLOW dance, which I would have loved. Halloween is hands down my favorite um, holiday. I wish it were an official holiday, so I got the day off to just dress up all day, but... I guess I'm an adult now and can't go that far, but oh well. In 1982, a Catch the Fire concert held by the band that I've been um, treating you with with this tour uh, by Charlie Murphy and Jamie Sieber was held in the Humanities Theater. This duo, of course, formed the progressive folk rock band Rumors of the Big Wave and wrote the 2S LGBTQ plus anthem Gay Spirit, though their Catch the Fire album, uh, the only album they actually produced while they were together, was full of songs addressing issues faced by the rainbow community. And in 1991, Glow's 20th anniversary was celebrated with drinks, food, and guest speakers, ending with a dance at Circles on Charles Street in downtown Kitchener. Jim, did you ever attend any of the events up on that third floor lounge or even go to this concert? So many good memories of the third floor lounge of Hagee Hall, which was actually a double lounge with a connecting door. For an extended period of time in the late 1990s, we held the GLOW discussion groups there, and there were times when we had well in excess of 20 people attending. Uh, this included both people from campus and off campus as well. It was so many people we had to split the group in two and have a facilitator in each room. Sometimes there were more than 35 participants. And once again, as we walk from Hagee Hall to our next little stop here on this tour, I'll throw you guys another song from Rumors of the Big Wave to listen to. When we were born, they tried to cover our eyes Then they tried to tell us all what to see We are discovering that did not work For we were born to be free It's a gay spirit singing in our hearts Leading us through these troubled times
gay spirit singing in our hearts, leading us through these troubled times. It's a gay spirit moving round this land, calling us to a time of open love. You run and tell that old patriarch we're no longer blind to his way. You run and tell him that we've stolen all the keys to the prison he has made. Tell him there's a gay spirit moving round this land, leading us through these troubled times. A gay spirit singing in our hearts, calling us to a time of open love. Sometimes it gets too hard to feel all the joy. In the face of all the pain we see But there's a healing place within our hearts It's coming alive in you and me There's a gay spirit singing in our hearts Leading us through these troubled times It's a gay spirit moving round this land Calling us to a time of As we walk towards East Ring Road from Hagee Hall, out in front of the Environment 3 building, we see Laurel Creek, where uh, many barbecues were held in the park by Wiglum and later Glow. One such event was the Canada Gay Barbecue, held in July of 1989, with games, music, and dances hosted alongside the food. Jim himself doesn't have many anecdotes from uh, Laurel Creek, but he does remark that there were many mosquitoes, given uh, the location of the creek very close to this green space, but... Thankfully, many of these events happened before the uh, legendary Canadian geese took over University of Waterloo's campus. Uh, we encountered many while filming this tour, and of course, uh, social distance laws um, protected us more than them, I think, which was a relief. From Laurel Creek, we are already on East Ring Road, which is kind of uh, the next location and experience we'd like to touch on. And I'll hand it over to Jim as we walk this path uh, to talk about his walk down East Ring Road, holding his partner's hand for the first time, how that felt, and um, how it feels today as you keep returning to campus to walk hand in hand with your partner. 
I met my sweetheart, William, in the summer of 1999 at a GLOW discussion group. This is when I was working as a professional librarian at the University of Waterloo. After we had been a couple for a year or two, we started to feel envious of opposite sex couples who were walking hand in hand uh, on the ring road. Um, so we started doing so ourselves in the year 2000 and 2001. At first it was a hair raising experience, but nothing happened except that most people we passed would avert their eyes as if we were doing something in dreadful taste. After a few months of that, we took this show off campus, eventually touring all of Waterloo Region, and then we continued to do so when we traveled outside the region. As it happened, we rarely see same-sex couples walking hand in hand when we're on the UW campus at this time today. Thank you for sharing that story, Jim. I love it. It's incredibly heartwarming um, and harrowing. So thank you for um, sharing that with us. And I'd also like to take this moment as we head up to our last stop on our Rainbow History Tour that um, Jim's story being at the University of Waterloo and my own story uh, doing my master's here are not representative of every experience here at the University of Waterloo and we're hoping to go forward with collecting um, these types of stories and creating a more diverse uh, collection of oral histories from the Rainbow community centered on uh, Waterloo, the city in general, not just the University of Waterloo's campus. So we're happy to receive any stories that you are comfortable sharing anonymously or not and we'll provide our contacts at the end of this tour. If you'd like to send it our way over email, we'll be happy to receive it because we'd love to start uh, collecting these histories and protecting them and giving them the attention that they deserve. must I have to place across my door To keep the angel of death at bay in the middle of a silent war When love becomes the battle, there's a chance you could not win And touch is a weapon you can't live without, it just might mean the end And I choose life Step out of the shadows of fear Day after day and year after year after you In the center of the heartbreak Another friend falls down We gather up our brokenness Listen to the empty sound If there's method to the madness A reason for the pain I know when the storm is over No one's ever gonna be the same I choose life Step out of the shadows of fear Day after day and year after year After year Imagine the danger we would find When the dream of love became a nightmare Dancing on the edge of time Somehow we are stronger After too much letting go When the tear in the heart grows wider You feel how the love can flow I choose life Step out of the shadows of fear Day after day, year 
Here we are at the last stop on our tour. This is the Student Life Center, which has been host to various GLOW events such as movie nights, bake sales, and the very popular Bomb Shelter Pub. Unfortunately, the Bomb Shelter Pub that was housed here at the Student Life Center is now closed after 40 years at UW's uh, campus as the favorite campus pub for students and though the space um, is set to be rebranded and reopened in the future people will sorely miss the bomb shelter. The pub itself which was affectionately referred to as the bomber by students was host to concerts, game nights, trivia and of course the iconic drag me to the bomber drag shows that were part of making this location a familiar space for members of the rainbow community. Other events included BB and GG or boys and boys and girls and girls dances that were attended not only by UW students but also students from Laurier and because of this environment students felt comfortable dancing in same-sex pairs. Jim did you ever go to the bomber attend any of these dances? We'd love to hear. The most thrilling experience that we had here occurred very early on. In the fall of 1971, we advertised a pub that was to be held on September 16 in the Bomb Shelter pub. And we indicated that it was to feature male go-go dancers from Toronto. This caught the attention of some homophobic engineers who attended the dance for the purpose of disrupting the event. But things did not go quite as expected. The Toronto performers did not show up, so some of our group had to act as go-go dancers. And go-go dancing was usually done with minimal clothing on and on a raised surface like a table. The engineering students were prevented from disrupting the performance by a human wall that was formed of lesbian gays and allies. Two of the engineers have evidently decided to salvage their disruption attempt by mimicking the go-go performance. They found two tables of their own and began dancing on them with the shirts off. And one of the engineers obligingly responded to calls of take it off by lowering his pants and mooning the assembly. That's incredible, Jim. Thank you for sharing. And with that, that concludes our Rainbow History Tour. I hope you've all enjoyed our virtual walk today through the early history of the 2S LGBTQ plus community with regard to GLOW's activity here on campus. I do want to reiterate that uh, though we've mentioned safe spaces and growth for the queer community here at the University of Waterloo, life for queer folks was not perfect and is currently not perfect. The work is not done. In 1975, there was an incident where a group of lesbian students were denied housing 
for their sexuality when the landlord found out, and they were not protected under human rights codes in matters such as housing, so they were unable to fight for that housing back, but they were incredibly brave in sharing their story publicly to the University of Waterloo's newspapers. So though many safe spaces existed on campus, um, it wasn't universal and is not today universal, so I hope this is a call to action for everybody today to um, do what we can to advance the University of Waterloo and the City of Waterloo as a safe space for folks, especially within the queer and trans communities, people of color, uh, and those intersecting identities are incredibly important and underserviced in Pride, so we need to do better. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Glow Center here and Spectrum for their help. Uh, congratulations on 50 years of doing great work at the University of Waterloo and for the city in general. And of course, I'd love for you all to check out the other orgs on campus like WPIRG, Angie Queers, UW Drake Club, Rainbow Reels, and QTPOCKW, whose socials I will provide at the end of this tour. And of course, today's histories were not exhaustive, and they represent only uh, one organization on campus. At the City of Waterloo Museum, we see this tour as a foundational step in building a much more comprehensive collection of 2S LGBTQ plus histories tied to the City of Waterloo and its variant and intersecting communities. So if you'd like to share any of your stories with us or help us in our mission to do so, please reach out. Um, Spectrum is also hosting other Pride events this month, so please head over to ourspectrum.com slash pride to find out more, as is the Glow Center. So, thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you at the next one. Sing I know it starts to shine